Ubiquitous computing or Ubicomp is a concept in software engineering and computer science where computing is made to appear anytime and everywhere. In contrast to desktop computing, ubiquitous computing can occur using any device, in any location, and in any format. A user interacts with the computer, which can exist in many different forms, including laptop computers, tablets and terminals in everyday objects such as a refrigerator or a pair of glasses. The underlying technologies to support ubiquitous computing include internet, advanced middleware, operating system, mobile code, sensors, microprocessors, new I.O. and user interfaces, networks, mobile protocols, location and positioning, and new materials. This paradigm is also described as pervasive computing, ambient intelligence, or everywhere. Each term emphasizes slightly different aspects. When primarily concerning the objects involved, it is also known as physical computing, the Internet of Things, haptic computing, and things that think. Rather than propose a single definition for ubiquitous computing and for these related terms, a taxonomy of properties for ubiquitous computing has been proposed, from which different kinds or flavors of ubiquitous systems and applications can be described. Ubiquitous computing touches on a wide range of research topics, including distributed computing, mobile computing, location computing, mobile networking, context aware computing, sensor networks, human computer interaction, and artificial intelligence. Core concepts At their core, all models of ubiquitous computing share a vision of small, inexpensive, robust networked processing devices, distributed at all scales throughout everyday life and generally turned to distinctly commonplace ends. For example, a domestic ubiquitous computing environment might interconnect lighting and environmental controls with personal biometric monitors woven into clothing so that illumination and heating conditions in a room might be modulated, continuously and imperceptibly. Another common scenario posits refrigerators. Aware of their suitably tagged contents, able to both plan a variety of menus from the food actually on hand, and warn users of stale or spoiled food. Ubiquitous computing presents challenges across computer science, in systems design and engineering, in systems modeling, and in user interface design. Contemporary human-computer interaction models, whether command-line, menu-driven, or GUI-based, are inappropriate and inadequate to the ubiquitous case. This suggests that the natural Interaction paradigm appropriate to a fully robust ubiquitous computing has yet to emerge, although there is also recognition in the field that in many ways we are already living in a ubicomp world see also the main article on natural user interfaces. Contemporary devices that lend some support to this latter idea include mobile phones, digital audio players, radio frequency identification tags, GPS, and interactive whiteboards. Mark Weiser proposed three basic forms for ubiquitous system devices see also smart device, tabs, pads and boards. Tabs, wearable centimeter-sized devices. Pads, handheld decimeter-sized devices. Boards, meter-sized interactive display devices. These three forms proposed by Weiser are characterized by being macro-sized, having a planar form and on incorporating visual output displays. If we relax each of these three characteristics we can expand this range into a much more diverse and potentially more useful range of ubiquitous computing devices. Hence, three additional forms for ubiquitous systems have been proposed. Dust, miniaturized devices can be without visual output displays, e.g. micro-electro-mechanical systems MEMS, ranging from nanometers through micrometers to millimeters. See also smart dust. Skin, fabrics based upon light-emitting and conductive polymers, organic computer devices, can be formed into more flexible non-planar display surfaces and products such as clothes and curtains, see OLED display. MEMS device can also be painted onto various surfaces so that a variety of physical world structures can act as network surfaces of MEMS. Clay, ensembles of MEMS can be formed into arbitrary three-dimensional shapes as artifacts resembling many different kinds of physical object see also tangible interface. In his book The Rise of the Network Society, Manuel Castells suggests that there is an ongoing shift from already decentralized, standalone microcomputers and mainframes towards entirely pervasive computing. In his model of a pervasive computing system, Castells uses the example of the Internet as the start of a pervasive computing system. 
The logical progression from that paradigm is a system where that networking logic becomes applicable in every realm of daily activity, in every location and every context. Castells envisages a system where billions of miniature, ubiquitous intercommunication devices will be spread worldwide, like pigment in the wall paint. Ubiquitous computing may be seen to consist of many layers, each with their own roles, which together form a single system. Layer 1, Task Management Layer Monitors user task, context and index Map users task to need for the services in the environment To manage complex dependencies Layer 2, Environment Management Layer To monitor a resource and its capabilities to map service need, user level states of specific capabilities Layer 3, Environment Layer To monitor a relevant resource To manage reliability of the resources History Mark Weiser coined the phrase, ubiquitous computing. Around 1988, during his tenure as chief technologist of the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center Park. Both alone and with park director and chief scientist John Seeley Brown, Weiser wrote some of the earliest papers on the subject, largely defining it and sketching out its major concerns. Topic recognizing the effects of extending processing power Recognizing that the extension of processing power into everyday scenarios would necessitate understandings of social, cultural and psychological phenomena beyond its proper ambit, Weiser was influenced by many fields outside computer science, including philosophy, phenomenology, anthropology, psychology, postmodernism, sociology of science and feminist criticism. He was explicit about the humanistic origins of the invisible ideal in postmodernist thought, referencing as well the ironically dystopian Philip K. Dick novel Ubik. Andy Hopper from Cambridge University UK proposed and demonstrated the concept of teleporting where applications follow the user wherever he, she moves. Roy Want, while a researcher and student working under Andy Hopper at Cambridge University, worked on the Active Badge System, which is an advanced location computing system where personal mobility that is merged with computing. Bill Shillett now at Google, also did some earlier work in this topic, and participated in the early mobile computing workshop held in Santa Cruz in 1996. Ken Sakamura of the University of Tokyo, Japan leads the Ubiquitous Networking Laboratory UNL, Tokyo as well as the T-Engine Forum. The joint goal of Sakamura's Ubiquitous Networking Specification and the T-Engine Forum, is to enable any everyday device to broadcast and receive information. MIT has also contributed significant research in this field, notably Things That Think Consortium directed by Hiroshi Ishii, Joseph A. Paradiso and Rosalind Picard at the Media Lab and the CSAIL effort known as Project Oxygen. Other major contributors include University of Washington's Ubicomp Lab directed by Shwetak Patel, Georgia Tech's College of Computing, Cornell University's People Aware Computing Lab, NYU's Interactive Telecommunications Program, UC Irvine's Department of Informatics, Microsoft Research, Intel Research and Equator, AJOU University UCRI and CUS. Examples. <laughs> <laughs> One of the earliest ubiquitous systems was artist Natalie Jeremijenko's Live Wire, also known as Dangling String, installed at Xerox Park during Mark Weiser's time there. This was a piece of string attached to a stepper motor and controlled by a LAN connection. Network activity caused the string to twitch, yielding a peripherally noticeable indication of traffic. Weiser called this an example of COM technology. A present manifestation of this trend is the widespread diffusion of mobile phones. Many of mobile phones supporting high-speed data transmission, video services, and mobile devices with powerful computational ability. Although these mobile devices are not necessarily manifestations of ubiquitous computing, there are examples, such as Japan's Yaoyorozu 8 million gods project in which mobile devices, coupled with radio frequency identification tags demonstrate that ubiquitous computing is already present in some form. Ambient devices has produced an orb a dashboard and a weather beacon. These decorative devices receive data from a wireless network and report current events, such as stock prices and the weather, like the Nabistag produced by Violet Snowden. 
The Australian futurist Mark Pess has produced a highly configurable 5-2 LED lamp-enabled lamp which uses Wi-Fi named Moore's Cloud after Moore's Law. The Unified Computer Intelligence Corporation has launched a device called UBI, the ubiquitous computer that is designed to allow voice interaction with the home and provide constant access to information. Ubiquitous computing research has focused on building an environment in which computers allow humans to focus attention on select aspects of the environment and operate in supervisory and policy-making roles. Ubiquitous computing emphasizes the creation of a human-computer interface that can interpret and support a user's intentions. For example, MIT's Project Oxygen seeks to create a system in which computation is as pervasive as air. In the future, computation will be human-centered. It will be freely available everywhere, like batteries and power sockets, or oxygen in the air we breathe. We will not need to carry our own devices around with us. Instead, configurable generic devices, either handheld or embedded in the environment, will bring computation to us, whenever we need it and wherever we might be. As we interact with these anonymous devices, they will adopt our information personalities. They will respect our desires for privacy and security. We won't have to type, click, or learn new computer jargon. Instead, we'll communicate naturally, using speech and gestures that describe our intent. This is a fundamental transition that does not seek to escape the physical world and enter some metallic, gigabyte-infested cyberspace, but rather brings computers and communications to us, making them synonymous with the useful tasks they perform. Network robots link ubiquitous networks with robots, contributing to the creation of new lifestyles and solutions to address a variety of social problems including the aging of population and nursing care. Topic issues Privacy is easily the most often cited criticism of ubiquitous computing Ubicomp, and may be the greatest barrier to its long-term success. An article by Linda Little and Pam Briggs on this privacy issue, states that, these are the kinds of privacy principles that have been established by the industry, but over the past two years, we have been trying to understand whether such principles reflect the concerns of the ordinary citizen. Some of the key research questions we have been addressing are, what are users' key concerns regarding privacy management in a ubiquitous context and do they reflect expert privacy principles? Do these concerns vary as a function of context? Will users have enough confidence in privacy management procedures to hand over management and administration of their privacy preferences? Motahari, et al., 2007, argue people do not have a complete understanding of the threats to their privacy. While users of Ubicomp systems are aware of inappropriate use of their personal information, legal obligations and inadequate security they are less aware of setting preferences for who has access and any social inferences that can be made by observations by other people. They further argue a holistic approach is needed as traditional approaches and current investigations are not enough to address privacy threats in ubiquitous computing. Recognizing, in line with a number of other researchers Harper and Singleton, 2001, Payne, et al., 2007, that privacy concerns are likely to be highly situation-dependent, we have developed a method of enquiry which displays a rich context to the user in order to elicit more detailed information about those privacy factors that underpin our acceptance of ubiquitous computing. Public policy problems are often, preceded by long shadows, long trains of activity, emerging slowly, over decades or even the course of a century. There is a need for a long-term view to guide policy decision-making, as this will assist in identifying long-term problems or opportunities related to the ubiquitous computing environment. This information can reduce uncertainty and guide the decisions of both policy makers and those directly involved in system development Wedemeyer et al., 2001. One important consideration is the degree to which different opinions form around a single problem. Some issues may have strong consensus about their importance, even if there are great differences in opinion regarding the cause or solution. For example, few people will differ in their assessment of a highly tangible problem with physical impact such as terrorists using new weapons of mass destruction to destroy human life. The problem statements outlined above that address the future evolution of the human species or challenges to identity have clear cultural or religious implications and are likely to have greater variance in opinion about them equals equals see also